One day, Edward stopped outside the vicarage orchard. Trevor was resting, looking rather unwell. Goodness, said Edward concerned. You certainly seen better days. I can't breathe properly, wheezed Trevor. Mr. Cole says I need a new boiler, but the vicar can't afford it. What a shame, sympathized Edward. Is there any way I can help? Oh, thank you, Edward. But please don't bother yourself. I'll be fine. I promise. But Edward wasn't so sure. He puffed away with much on his mind. At the station, Edward explained the situation to Boko. I'm worried, he sighed. I've never seen Trevor in such a state. Boko pondered the problem. Perhaps you could have a fun run, he suggested. My drivers participated in quite a few. They can bring in quite a few donations. That's it, cried Edward excitedly. Later that day, he spoke to the fat controller about it. A splendid idea, he smiled. I'll start making the arrangements straight away. As the fat controller walked into his office, Edward couldn't help but feel hopeful. At last, the day came. Early that morning, Edward arrived at Callan for his non-stop run to Vickerstown. A line of coaches and a spare water tank were waiting for him at the platform. As his driver fastened a hose from the tanker to Edward's tender, excited passengers crowded around, eager to participate in the fun run. The guard barely had enough tickets to go around. Soon, everything was ready. With a determined whistle, Edward slowly pulled out of the station, beginning the first stage of his long trek. Edward was making good progress as he arrived at the big station. People and engines cheered as he whistled as he passed by. At the next station, he slowed so his crew could pick up buckets of coal on the platform. Good luck, Edward, called Thomas, waiting nearby. Feeling encouraged, Edward picked up speed, and was soon speeding along in fine style. This is lovely, he thought. At this rate, I'll reach the end of the line in no time. But he reckoned without the hill. As Edward began the climb, he felt the weight of the coaches pull against his coupling. He hadn't been expecting so many passengers, and he was now struggling to get over the hill. I will do it! I will do it! He panted as he entered his way up. He did it at last, and closed it down without further effort. You use quite a lot of water back there, said his driver, concerned. I'm not sure we have enough for the rest of the journey. We'll have to make do, said Edward determinedly. The first few stations afterwards, everything went well. But as they passed the workstation, Edward's tank was quickly running dry. Nothing left in the water tanker, said the fireman, and we can't just stop for more. Edward saw it on, but he was beginning to feel hot and bothered. I must do it! I must do it! He puffed wearily. As he struggled along, Gordon approached on the express line. Keep it up, my dear Edward, he called. You can do it! With newfound confidence, Edward pressed on and continued. At last, Edward could see Vickerstown in the distance. Nearly there, nearly there, he gasped. But by now, his tank was completely empty. Thinking quickly, his crew damped down his fire, and Edward was able to struggle on just a bit further until he finally ran out of steam, right at the station platform. The passengers erupted out of the coaches and cheered Edward to the heavens. The fat controller was there too, and congratulated Edward on his fine performance. Edward had no steam to reply, but managed to give a thankful, relieved smile. The fun run was a great success, and a few weeks later, when Edward passed the vicarage orchard again, he saw Trevor happily basking in the warm sun. Lovely seeing you again, he smiled. How are you feeling? Better than new, said Trevor with a youthful vigor. I'm most grateful, Edward. The vicar says you're what your controller calls really useful. Edward was flattered. I wouldn't say that, he said. Just helping a friend is all. With that, he continued on his way, as Trevor gave a cheerful whistle and farewell.